<laughs> we were all professional athletes. They called us the Olympic Five. When a crook talks to you in the middle of a fight, you know you're up against a rookie. I need information, I need information, I need information! I pulled him up! I'm afraid that... Whoa! Holy Watch fuck! Out. It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates, so my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing. Ooh, secrets are hidden. Could have been one of the Olympic Five as the sniper? Bing, bing. So far, yeah, we have three guys that are connected. You're Let's dead! No, I got you with my lasso! Can you quiet down, kids? Dunn got killed for stirring the hornet's nest. And you confessed your crime! Kids, please. He'd been investigating athletes for months, including Helen Moore and Al Stone, among others. Mm. Dunn's notes aren't all that clear, and I'm not sure what he was after. Mm. But I'd say we're facing a widespread corruption case. Well, if you're right, that could be some dangerous evidence. Bring it here ASAP. Sure, but there's something important that I need to finish first. According to his notebook, Dunn had seen Craig Spano at Sam's diner just four days before his death. Get out of here, pussy! What did you call me?! I'm sorry about what happened to Mary. You're sorry? I'm the one who's sorry. You know what it's like to run this place alone? What the hell do you care, anyway? Beat it! It might have been easier to slap the information out of him, but I decided to trust in a universal truth. Everyone is guilty of something. You don't know who I am, right? Don't know and don't care! Come on, spit it out! I'm John H. Blackmore, public health inspector. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> there are some real freaks around here, so I have to be firm, you know? Have you eaten? Dinner's on the house. After you answer my questions. Sure, go ahead. Your call. Always at your disposal, Inspector. Ask away. Fear turned him soft and made him talk. Sure enough, Don had been there a few days back with a chimpanzee who matched Spano's description. See, we're meeting the rest. Apparently, the guy still lived with his father. Dunn said he couldn't stay there a day more. For the time being, he would move into his place. Wait a minute! What does public health services have to do with that chimp? The chimp died of food poisoning. But wait! He... he didn't even eat! Which is even worse. You see what I mean? We got Thorpe, we have Dunn, we have the Lizard, we have, um... Fuck, I already forgot the rest. We got the Chimp here now. And the other one, obviously he died in the war, but it's like, we have them. There has to be a connection for those days. Dunn had taken Spano to his place. I wanted Could the to Sniper be the Lizard? When Randall Lee broke into the apartment, Spano fled to his former address. But where could that be?
Oh god, I gotta figure out where it is. Yep. I got you. If the living have you don't think Thor had him killed, right? So do the dead. What is in that evidence? What's in that folder? That's in what I need to know. In the 19th century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished citizens. Thinkers, scientists, writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers. lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Now you know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple. According to the book I found at Dunn's place, fans of the sport leave baseballs on Bradwick's tomb to pay their respects. It's strange that I don't see any. Maybe they're gone with the wind, or somebody claimed them as part of their inheritance. It'd be even better with a skull between the bats. Oh yeah, that's evidence. Still hot. Oh my god, if he's in the tree, I swear to god. I knew it! I'm right there. I can I can see you. Are we gonna climb the tree? Are we gonna set the tree on fire? I've always been a New York Warriors fan, although to be honest, they're not what they used to be. Yep, they just haven't been the same without Craig Spano. I found a baseball glove at Joe Dunn's place, a glove signed by a great star. I couldn't believe my luck. I'm investigating a case of sports corruption. I think a considerable amount of athletes are involved, both current celebrities and former stars.
John Blackside, private investigator. How's Joe? One question at a time. It's my turn. Your turn. What was your glove doing at Dunn's place? Because Dunn said he was shaking the hornet's nest, that sooner or later they'd come after me, because they wanted to kill me, because he offered me his home. And then... Vanished. Because I waited for him for two days and then they came to get me. Because I had no time to take my glove when I escaped through the window. What did he want from you? And who wants to kill you? One question at a time. How's Joe? What would happen if I told him the truth? Would he lose it? Could I take that chance? Ah, oh, shit. I have to be honest, maybe he'll help me in the process to to figure out why this is happening. He has to know it's his friend. Joe Dunn is dead. Murdered. I told you, Joe! How did it happen? A hitman. But he's dead now. Although whoever hired him still hasn't been punished. My turn. What did Dunn want from you? He wanted to know who was playing dirty in the sporting business. Dirtier than usual, that is. Wrecked lives, careers, ruined at the top of the game. He wanted to know if the same had happened to me. He wanted to know if the end of my career and my disappearance had anything to do with all that, he wanted me to confirm who was behind it all. The guy who had him killed. Our old friend, the surgeon. So, shit, uh, I was immediately about to say it's O'Leary because of all the, uh, betting that was happening, but, I don't know. That's a, that's a, don't know, I don't know. Oh, I can put this together. I can't? Okay. Tec technically, Dr. Surgeon, eh, is it a stretch? Probably. It's not! Good! Is Mitchell the surgeon? Is he the person behind all of this? That surgeon you mentioned, is he... My turn. I want to know why I should trust you. Because I take my job very seriously. It's my turn. That surgeon that you mentioned, is he in this photo I got here? Ow! Hey! Ah. Hey, that toss was... Ah, shit. Both my ear and my self-esteem would hurt for days. But at least I had a new lead to follow. The surgeon. The bastard had avoided my scrutiny by passing as a hospital doctor. But now, all of my senses were on guard. No matter how good the disguise, or how well he hid, I would find him. So, what you're saying is, one, there's a corruption scandal involving all kinds of athletes. 
two, our puppet master is a surgeon named Mitchell, a man who happened to fight in the war with Dunn, right? Every lead I've found points to him. Anyway, where was I? Number three, right? Three. Since Dunn was on his trail, Mitchell hired an anteater to get rid of him. Then, since you were also shaking the wasp's nest, he went after you. But the anteater made a mistake, and Mitchell killed him to cover his own tracks. And, wait, four. The key to all this lies with a common friend of Dunn's and Mitchell's, Craig Spenow. Do you really trust him? I think he is telling the truth. I he, I think he is. What about Thorpe, though? He's still a part of this, too. He knows them as well. I think he didn't lie to us. Although he might not know the whole truth. Four. No, I mean, five. Dunn was murdered five, I mean, four days after taking Spenno to his house. If that doesn't make him suspect, makes sense, doesn't it? Oh, no, he's a suspect, too. You, you, you ran away from all that. Yeah, it could make sense. Ha! <laughs> Who's the detective now? Still me. Let's follow up with the suspects. You told Smirnoff that even though you're sure Yale is innocent, you think he's hiding something. But what about O'Leary? Um, six. Oh, it's a good one, it's a good one. Uh... Again, like... So yeah, these two wouldn't match, because if he does it himself, someone else did order, so... Yes. O'Leary wouldn't have sent Randall to kill Dunn. He would have dragged him to his basement, given him his little speech, and then killed him himself. Nah. I know O'Leary, and he wouldn't have sent a hitman. He would have taken matters into his own hands. What about Cassidy? Seven, right? No, no, no. Yeah. Cassidy does not, from my interaction with him, he does not think things through. This one was thought out in detail of trying to frame Yale. So it's not him. I think it's safe to rule out Cassidy as Dunn's murderer. He seems too impulsive to have planned such a twisted crime. Whoever planned the whole thing knew the suicide theory would fall through. So he manipulated the clues to incriminate Yale. Cassidy is too impulsive to pull off such an intricate plan. So, you're right. Mitchell is the one pulling the strings. And you know why? Because, in novels, the murderer is always someone the detective knows from the beginning. Well, that could be the case in British novels. You know, where everyone in the mansion where the murder took place is a suspect. But... This might just be an American whodunit, where the detective doesn't even meet the culprit until the last scene. You mean we still don't know who's pulling the strings? I didn't say that. How did it go with Helen Moore? What if it is Thorpe, uh, then? I didn't get anything, even though it started out really well. He came I in after Mitchell. along with her boyfriend, Al Stone. Since I'm a big shot, they were happy to oblige. Perfect. Now, time for the interview. I'll go back and forth so you don't get bored. So, who goes first? Here's a question for Al. Are you ever jealous about sharing your sweetheart with America? Uh... Yeah, I, uh... Nonsense. America has my smile, my figure, and my patriotic love. Everything else, and I mean everything, belongs to Al. Right, baby? Gross. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, now... Here's one for Helen.
Dating a boxer can be dangerous. Aren't you afraid that those blows to the head will take a toll on his intellectual capacity? Honey, take a look at my man and then look at yourself. You really think I'm with him because of his intellectual capacity? Helen! Write this down. Nothing will change my man. His smarts, manliness, and integrity are all boxing proof. Moving on. Here's one for both of you. How did you meet? At the party organized by Des- Ow! Who threw the party doesn't matter one bit. What matters is that I saw you and you saw me. Our paths crossed and our lives were changed forever. Now what? Time for a picture. How should we pose? Okay, how about a hug? I want to feel the love. You're the envy of all America. Okay. Okay, one more question, and... Oh. Al, honey, can you answer it? I've got to go say hi to a fan. <laughs> I'll be right back, Mr. Pulitzer. <laughs> Wait. You mean she stopped smiling when that fan showed up? Uh, yeah. Could you describe him for me? I'll be able to show you something as soon as I'm done developing these pictures. And actually, I thought it was odd, too. So while I continued to interview Stone, I managed to take some pictures of Moore and whoever her mysterious fan was. I would like to know. All right. So uh, where were we? Your manager is I'll ask Frank questions Cassidy, and see if I can take pictures of the Boxing too. Managers Association of New York. According to him, only boxers working with member managers should be allowed to compete. What do you think about that? Cassidy is a great manager, really. No complaints there. And the work he's putting in as president of the association is really valuable. But, I don't know, maybe in this case, Joe Dunn was right. Wait, no. Could you keep that last comment uh, off the record? You know, on the down low. My lips are sealed. Let's get that picture taken. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Turn around and show me those biceps from behind. Like that? That's it. Ooh. How do I look over at the mysterious person? I can't look over. What's with me today? Don't move, please. That's a handsome bicep, you know. So I can't look over immediately yet, okay. Now we got it. Should we keep at it? I didn't get the face! In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Well, supposedly the odds are in my favor, but there's no such thing as a weak rival. And, you know, Bobby Yale might be young and going through a rough patch, but he's had a, an amazing streak, so I'll do my best. I'm one going last to take picture. one more, all right? Yes. Let's see that, what you think about pose. this. Close your eyes. And rest your chin on your fist. The boxing thinker. Like these? Exactly. Right. There. What's up with me? Stand still. I'll take it again. I see lizard! I it's lizard! Right. Don't move. It's about time. Finally. We're all set. It's lizard! Wait. So, are you telling me the photos are developed, or is that what you said to Stone? <laughs> Both. Just look. That one's a bit blurry. 
Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. I can barely see his face, my friend. Right there. I think she only smokes when she's nervous. What was making her nervous? Where's the picture? Look there. at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse? Or putting it in? Just putting it in. Yes! Hmm. Wait, that's him. Who? Mitchell, the surgeon. Seriously? <laughs> we got him. Not yet. I've seen that matchbox before. Focus, Black Sad. We need to figure out how to find that Mitchell. Don't want that place. Mm. Hey, pal. Did you hear what I just said? We need to keep looking at all those pictures. We I need a know clue where to look. that'll take us to Mitchell. Hey, see? There. Just like I was saying. Shut up, Weekly! Brawls aren't even the worst part of my job. Sure, you may take a beating, but at least you get the chance to defend yourself. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up, your back and neck feel stiff, your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. People were finally leaving the place. The bar was about to close. And I hadn't seen Mitchell go in or out. I had no choice. Do you think I'll be welcome since I have, you know, fur on my body? I see you took me up on my invitation. And you're smart. You knew not to come until my anti-fur regulars had all cleared see? out. Yeah, I knew it. Racist against fur! Can't say no to good advice. Fur is murder! Or good bourbon. Can I drop the act or does he, do I still need to be on, on Farnham? He's looking at you, Mr. Uh, what was your name? As far as I knew, the iguana always stayed neutral. He played poker with Cassidy. But his joint was used as a gambling drop-off for O'Leary's operation. Did it make sense to keep faking it? Or was it too dangerous not to? Oh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Farnham. Fuck. Howard I don't know if I should. M. Farnham II. That's right. Howard Farnham from Ding Dong, Texas. You're natural. You're even better at pool than poker. Ah, oh, this here's much easier. No cheating. <laughs> you barely flinched when Cassidy yeah, decided to teach that eagle a lesson. Broke my suit in them. What do you want a fella to say? Uh, okay. I don't know. I forgot what I was saying. I was distracted. If Cassidy hadn't ordered his barber to kill that son of a bitch, I'd have done it myself. Some of God's creatures just don't deserve to live. Damn it. Well, nobody's perfect. Tell me, what do you really want with Cassidy? Or I maybe he already knows I'm not really him. Mm, suspicious. Well, you see, Desmond O'Leary is my enemy. 
If you know a thing or two about him, I can leave it at that. Don't worry about it. I was only curious. So, what about you suck. me? What do you want from me? No one comes to like one I just to drink and play pool. I'm here You're looking for a regular of yours. Dr. Angus Mitchell. What for? Uh... <laughs> I can't think of a good excuse to say. I guess that. I know he's got his own sport business, and I think a partnership would be profitable for the both of us. Sure. Tell you what. I'll talk to Mitchell. Come back tomorrow night. You don't understand. I have to talk to him or else. Or else what? I'm not good at thinking of ex excuses here. This one, sure. I don't <laughs> think Cassidy would be too happy about the role this here dump plays in old Leary's gambling operation. You follow me? Son of a bitch. Probably should not have threatened him. All right. Give me your phone number, and I'll give you a call when Mitchell shows up. No. You're going to call him right now, and you're going to give him this message. I broke my axe. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring Fair. and repetitive. Fair. It's so bad that your thoughts spiral in a never-ending loop. Like when you're stuck in your car, on surveillance duty. This could be very suspicious. The owner of La Iguana was supposed to tell Mitchell that a certain anteater was still alive. And that it was only a matter of time before he ratted him out. With a bit of luck, that would make him nervous enough to force his hand. Now all I had to do was follow him. Phoenix, you're bursting a fire burn. My thirst and desire.